I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Paul, and this is Singing Frogs Farm. We're located in West County. Uh, our property is about eight acres, but we have about two and a half acres of production. It's all vegetable production. Soil scientists believe that we used to have in our agricultural soils six to ten percent soil organic matter. And through the act of tillage and other poor soil management practices, that is now one to two percent. And what we have really found is that six to ten percent soil organic matter is sort of a magical place to be in. It makes farming just really lovely because the pest pressure goes down, you're able to grow crops that are really healthy, vibrant, nutrient dense, and I think Mother Nature knew something. There's some balance in there where you have a soil organic matter between that 6 and 10 percent, and I think a lot of our food should be grown in that area. Soil science is ubiquitous. It's universal. It's the applicability to each region that is going to be a little bit different, and we found people have been able to apply our techniques in every region on the planet with great success. There are really three main principles to managing for better soil health. Disturb your soil as little as possible. Keep as diversity of living plants in the ground as often as possible. Keep your soil covered and protected as often as possible. This bed is actually a great example of keeping soil covered and protected all the time. In the morning, this bed was cabbage plants, and we harvested the cabbage for our CSA, and by late morning, we came back through and cut out all the above ground biomass. That went to the compost pile to get composted. We left the entire root structure intact, and then we came back through and put down a light half inch of compost on top of what used to be the cabbage bed, and then we transplanted in our tomatoes with a side dressing of lettuces. It's critical because the tomatoes are sort of a 20 inch spacing and after you put tomatoes in you have all this empty bed space that's not being used. That's a lot of bare and exposed soil that's volatilizing nutrients and we found that we can really put in a crop of lettuce on the sides while the tomatoes are getting established. Meanwhile, the higher organic matter levels in our soil mean that we can just sink our hands way down in and pull out some big beautiful black earth. We love having this rich chocolate colored high organic matter earth with old root balls in there still decomposing, beautiful soil. As a farmer, our job is to export nutrients and water off of our farm in the form of a cauliflower head or a bunch of kale to you, the consumer. However, if those nutrients are constantly going off of our farm, they need to have a way of coming back. In fact, if the nutrients leave the farm and don't come back, well, where do they end up? They end up as waste in landfills, or in the oceans, and therefore they release their methane and carbon and nitrogen to form greenhouse gas emissions. So my ideal would be if I sell you vegetables, part of that you're not gonna use, you'll put it in your um, compost bin. It'll get composted and then it'll come back to my farm. As certified organic compost. And then we'll continue with that cycle. One of the benefits of having really high organic matter in our soil is that it helps cut down on soil-borne pests. We also have greater plant health and therefore we've really wiped out all the viruses, diseases, and pathogens on our farm. So the whole act of being no-till and increasing organic matter has really made farming easier. Over the past hundred years, there's been a loss of between half and two-thirds of the planetary soil carbon in our agricultural soils and that carbon has been lost to the atmosphere as CO2. What ends up happening is when you do tillage, you are mechanically opening the soil. A lot of it volatilizes and becomes CO2 and nitrous oxide, um, two of our most potent greenhouse gases. Now, and yet, as a, farmer, as a farmer, the two things you want most in your soil are nitrogen for plant growth and carbon for soil structure. And the fact that we have lost more than half of the planetary soil carbon in our ag lands in just the past 100 years means we don't have another 100 years of soil carbon remaining to keep farming the way we have been farming. Even the United Nations has flat out said uh, that agroecological, small-scale, intensive, family-owned farms are the future of the planet. And if we're gonna have any future on this planet, we need to start looking at small-scale, intensive, family, agroecological farms.